Hey everyone, it's Nancy Tran, dental hygienist and fellow Burst TV star. Today's segment, I wanted to talk to you guys about sinus infections or toothaches. Um, as dental professionals, we wanna be able to help our patients better distinguish when they're experiencing a real toothache versus a sinus toothache. So as we know, millions of Americans are affected each year with sinus problems. So the question is, can sinus infections really cause a toothache? The answer is absolutely yes. It's also known as referred pain. So cyanitis is an infection of the lining of our tissues in the sinuses, which affects us with sinus pressure and drainage. So what is our sinus anatomy like? We have four air-filled spaces. We have them right here on the frontal sinuses. Between our eyes are ethmoid sinuses, behind the eyes, which is our sphenoid sinuses, and of course, what's most popular known in the dental profession is our maxillary sinuses. So our maxillary sinuses is where our upper teeth, the roots actually go into those airfield bases. So you can only imagine when we're experiencing sinus problems, the pressure of that pushes on the roots of our teeth, and that's where we get that referred sinus pain. So, what does our sinuses do? What's the purpose of them? The purpose of our sinuses is to be able to filter air in and out of our nasal cavities and then also produce mucus to clean the nose. Think of the fluid blockage. When we have a sinus infection, that means that our sinuses are blocked with fluid. The mucus gets thick. Think of a balloon. When we're blowing an air balloon, it's meant to be filled with air. So, when it actually has fluid or moisture in that balloon, what happens? The balloon gets heavier. So that's the best way to describe our sinuses to our patients when they're experiencing sinus infections. So ideally, when I have a patient in the chair, even myself, I experience this all the time. Sometimes I have referred pain and it feels like I have a toothache, but really it's just the sinus pressure. The more movement I make, if I'm doing yoga or if I'm laying down, my sinus pressure actually shifts with me. So that toothache or that pain, it actually moves depending on what activities I'm doing. So I kind of follow through with asking patients follow-up questions, especially if they're not known to be cavity prone. Have you had any sinus infections recently? Are you recovering from a cold? Did you experience this pain more when you were chewing or was it just more doing yoga or laying down? Things like that will better help our patients to treat themselves with home remedies before it actually gets worse um, and become an infection that leads to needing antibiotics or visiting a doctor. So let's talk about what patients are going to be at higher risk for having recurrent sinus infections throughout the year. Your patients are going to include anyone who suffers from seasonal allergies, asthma or has a low immune response in general. And then of course you have your patients that have structural nasal interferences that's gonna require surgical intervention in the near future. Now, how can we help our patients distinguish whether or not they're having a sinus toothache or a real toothache? A sinus toothache is gonna affect mainly your upper molars, several teeth versus one isolated tooth. The patient's gonna have lower energy, feeling under the weather, and also certain movements will change the intensity of those toothaches. The sinus pressure tends to shift with your movement when you're having a sinus toothache. Symptoms to look out for that aren't related to uh, your toothaches is gonna to be facial and nerve tenderness, pain, um, discolored mucus, loss of taste or smell, halitosis or bad breath, ear fullness or ear pain, and also a sore throat. So how can we help our patients remedy these symptoms? There's different things that you can do, and of course we wanna start with the least invasive and move on to the more invasive procedures when the least invasives are ineffective. Here are some home remedies that you can share with your patients to help them treat and triage their sinus infections at home. Number one, Staying hydrated, drinking a lot of water is gonna actually help moisten and thin out that mucus lining that's clogging up your sinuses. Number two, steam. Steam is recommended two times a day in a shower or boiling a hot bowl of water so that you can hover your sinuses over um, and that helps open up those sinuses and clear out all of that yucky stuff, making it easier for you to breathe. And last but not least, my personal favorite is the sinus flush. Sinus flush is also known as a nasal rinse or or 
neti pot that helps clear out and flush out all of that mucus that's clogged up into those sinuses. Um, I've tried a lot over the years, but personally found my favorite one, which I will elaborate a little bit more towards the end of the video and the reason why, especially for dental professionals, you guys are really gonna love recommending this for your patients because of an added ingredient. When that's not effective, the next thing would be over-the-counter treatments or prescriptions, um, and that includes decongestant medications, um, steroid nasal sprays, or even the doctor having to prescribe antibiotics for your patients. Um, I personally like to use my nasal spray two times a day, and that works really well. And it's just more for preventive because I suffer from it um, pretty frequently. Um, and then last but not least, when all of those are ineffective, then you have surgical intervention, and that's when you have structural inter interference that none of these products will help. That's just kind of help remedying it, but it's only temporary relief unless you need surgical intervention actually to alter the physical structures of your sinuses and your nasal passages. Okay, so as promised earlier in the video, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the new products that I'm currently using and why I like it. The number one ingredient that stands out from the rest of the brands um, over the counter right now is that majority of the rinses and sprays are going to be salt and bicarbonate um, mixed in, so that's saline. Um, so even though it works, it's, it, it doesn't give you any long-term relief as far as um, soothing and moisturizing the nasal tissues and the mucous membranes. Um, sometimes when you're doing that flush, you feel a burn or sometimes it has dryness after. Um, I found a brand that actually adds xylitol into their products and xylitol is known to reduce bacterial adhesion to the mucous membrane. So huh, it doesn't burn, it soothes and moisturizes when we're doing our flushes, and it reduces bacteria from adhering to our nasal passages and our sinus membranes and all that good stuff. So um, it gives you a sense of long-term relief, and um, that particular brand is going to be the X-Clear brand, um, the nasal spray, and then the Neti Pot Sinus Rinse. So um, the difference between the Sinus Care Rinse packet here is we add they add four grams of xylitol into their packet. So when you're doing your warm water rinse and flush, you're actually getting xylitol um, flushed through your sinuses. So that really helps long term because we know in dentistry, we love xylitol. So xylitol works really well and it helps reduce bacterial adhesion for the long-term effects of our sinus infections and our sinus problems. So I love it. Hopefully you guys get to try it. Um, but a lot of dental professionals before I even made this video have posted how much they love the nasal spray and this is their go-to. But this is probably not as easy to find the rinse because you have to actually either go to their website or find it on Amazon. I could not find this rinse over the counter um, in stores. This is probably gonna be easiest to find but I really had to hunt this down on Amazon. Um, so I don't know, you guys give it a try. If y'all have any other brands that you use or any other home remedies that you would like to share with us, please feel free to drop it down in the comments. I would love to be able to see what other natural or home care remedies we have for sinus infections. If y'all have had any surgical intervention that helped and you would recommend doing it, um, I would love to hear your stories on that too. Um, so. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more awesome segments from Burst TV. Have a great day.